Welcome to the Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon Series. I'm your host, Captain Matt. Today we're talking the seven new boat owner mistakes. If you recently bought a boat in the last year or so, you're going to learn a lot on this. If you've owned a boat for a while, you're going to say, ah, I remember making that mistake. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And you can't have this conversation without mentioning the drain plug. If you've boated for any length of time, you've done it, or you know somebody that, that's left the drain plug out and it causes major problems. Now, you may think this is only a trailer boater issue. I d keep my boat in a marina. I don't need to worry about this. Well, the reality is if you take your boat to get it uh, the service done on it and it stays on land, they'll actually take the drain plug out so that if it rains, the rain doesn't fill up that bilge compartment. This happened to my brother. They got their boat, went dewinterized the, the marina that did the service work, put it back in the water. And as they were idling out through the no wake zone, they realized the boat was getting really heavy and sluggish. And they opened the engine compartment. Sure enough, it's filling up with water. So they kind of sped up just a little bit and headed back to the dock. That will actually suck some of the water out uh, by getting that suction going as you're going. Uh, they made it back to the dock safely got the boat hauled, drained it for about 20 minutes, and were able to get back on their way. No harm, no foul. But check that drain plug each and every time. Double check it, triple check it, uh, just so that you don't get yourself in that situation. Next is service. Missing important services that need to be done, especially if you buy a used boat and you don't have that owner's manual. I'm going to encourage you to go get the owner's manual, see what's all involved in the maintenance and the service, because things like the bellows, you can see uh, these are the bellows that on a stern drive that go from the inside of the boat, the engine, out to the drive itself. This is the exhaust bellows, their shift cable, steering um, bellows that they go through. And as those start to get dry rotted and cracked, they can actually lead to your boat sinking. So you need to make sure that you pay attention to those. The boats left in the water tend to have them deteriorate much, much, much faster. And it's more of an issue, but it can happen uh, on any boat. So you need to know about that. If you're in salt water, you got to know about flushing your engine and making sure that you don't have that salt residue building up on the internal components. So you want to make sure that you follow your owner's manual, whether it's putting the earmuffs on, whether it's flushing it through the port, uh, the flush port on some of the newer outboards. And the stern drives need to be flushed as well. So all of that stuff matters. The checking your your gimbal bearing and your U joints, um, the universal joints, and pulling that drive yearly just to do the inspection that is suggested by the manual. Um, these are some things. There's a ton of them depending on the engine that you have. But you want to make sure that you don't get caught by missing something that turns into a very, very expensive repair that could have been a simple maintenance item that uh, could have been done by yourself or a service department for just a few hundred bucks. And instead, it turns into a few thousand dollar repair uh, like you see this uh, rusty old gimbal joint, uh, which is on the, on the stern drive. You also want to make sure when you are doing your maintenance that you either yourself or whoever's doing it knows how to work on boats. It's not a car that it's different. <laughs> As you can see, somebody mounted something in this boat and they used two long screws that went right through the gel coat. It's different. Yes, it's a, a most cases, it's a marinized GM engine, but there are so many differences with working on boats that you just want to make sure you don't get yourself in a bad situation by trying to go the cheap route and um, causing more problems than, uh, than what you solved. So that's maintenance. Next, we have learning how your boat operates and how to safely operate your boat in tight water situations and docking situations. If you've seen this video of this boat just getting out of control and jumping up on the docks, there's just too many of them out there now. The Qualified Captain Facebook makes a living off this stuff. The the chit show uh, down in Florida, uh, the YouTube channel that Alfred has. Knowing 
and taking the time to learn how to operate your boat safely and confidently in slow water, slow water situations, tight water maneuvering. It's why we created the best boat captain on the water training to help people learn the things that they just don't know they don't know about how their boat operates. There's a handful of, of easy things that you can do and maneuvers you can practice, and we talk about those in the best boat captain on the water. Check it out if you're interested in that. Next is not having the proper lines on your boat. Dock lines, uh, I recommend having a, a 25 to 50 foot heavy duty tow line just in case you need it. Uh, whether you're towing another boat or in, you need to be towed in or you just get in a situation where, man, you're, you're in a bad spot and you've just got to tie some things off and you need that extra line. I like to color match my lines. They look way better. They're no more expensive to get a, a matching navy or or a black or red or, or a royal blue line. <laughs> but make them match your boat. They'll look even better. And um, learn how to tie those couple of knots that you need to know uh, to tie your boat up. In case you get in this situation, the tide goes down more than you were anticipating. And those dock lines really got to, uh, to pull their weight. Next is anchoring. Listen, so many times on social media, I see people post, what's the right anchor? I can't get my anchor to hold. Should I get the box anchor? Do I need a heavier anchor? The reality is you don't need a bigger, heavier anchor in most situations. You need the proper anchor setup. And for most boats, 18 to 26 or 28 feet or so, um, you can get away with a, an 10 to 12 pound Danforth anchor. It's got the two little little forks on it that just dig in um, with a five foot section of chain. Shackle the anchor to the chain, the chain to the anchor road, and have a hundred to two hundred foot of anchor road, and that's going to get you through um, 90 percent, 95 percent of the the anchoring situations you're going to come into most, maybe even all of them in your situation. Um, and then letting out the proper amount of anchor line. So, um, if it's 20 feet of water, you need to put out probably close to the full hundred feet, um, of anchor road so that you stick the windier, the wavier, the more you want. They say three to seven times. If you're overnighting, go at seven. If you're just out in a cove and it's really quiet and calm, you can probably get away with three or so. Um, but three to five is sort of my rule on the lake. The amount of anchor road for the depth of water. So 10 feet of water, 30 to 50 foot of anchor road and having that chain does, it, it fixes a lot, a lot of problems. Um, and, and we talk about that in the best boat captain on the water training as well. Next is understanding the no wake speed and where your boat starts to make a wake and when it makes its biggest wake. Um, I encourage you to take your boat out there. We actually have got a, a, a little training exercise we do in the best boat captain on the water. Go out, take your boat in the middle of the lake and go idle speed. Look behind you and then speed up 300, 500 RPM and see where your, where your wake gets to be its biggest size. You'll be shocked at how slow you're going when you're making an enormous wake. Like the rudest thing you can do is go 10, 15 miles an hour. It puts out the biggest wake on most boats. But see what your boat does so that you can be courteous and follow the rules of, of boating. If you're a trailer boater, the biggest mistake that trailer boaters make when they're trailering is they put the trailer in too deep, way too deep of water where the boat's actually floating. It's not even contacting the trailer. We talk about that in the um, trailer like a tra trailer like a pro section of the of the training uh, special module you can add on if you're a trailer boater. But by leaving the bunks a little bit further out of the water you get some friction. So when you drive that boat up there and I encourage you to drive your boat on and then winch it the rest of the way. So you're not actually power loading, but you're making it as easy as possible. If you don't want to do that, we also show you how to do it with the, uh, without driving on and just doing it with the rope. It's a lot more work, but it, it it's works as well. If you're more comfortable with that, but by not being as deep in the water, leaving the appropriate amount. And it depends on your boat, 
your trailer and the ramp that you're on, how deep you need to go. Uh, there's some things to look for, but that will make your trailering so much easier. I would love to hear your comments about that. When you, If you've had struggled and you use that one little tip, uh, and we give you a whole bunch more in the training, but that one little tip is going to make a world of difference. Next, we've got water sports. If you're doing water sports, especially with kids, pay attention to your speed. All too often, I see little kids behind a boat and they're going way faster than they need to, which means the kid's going to have a harder fall than they need to. And they're probably not going to enjoy water sports as much as they would uh, or could or should. Um, so we've got a, a trailer, um, a towing water sports with confidence module as well that you can add on. Uh, for most kids, I tow my daughters on the wakeboard at about eight to 10 miles an hour with all that surface area. They're just under a hundred pounds. That's more than enough for them. When we're skiing again, it's about 10 miles an hour or so again, it's slow. So they're comfortable, but fast enough that they stay on top of the water. And I'm a big guy. I'm 200 pounds. When I slalom ski, I slalom ski at 32 miles an hour, maybe 33, um, that's where I like to be. If you're a professional water skier, you do it at 35. They're not even going that fast. When I barefooted, when I was a little younger, a little bit lighter, I barefooted at 32 miles an hour. So I'm close to 200 pounds um, or over 200 pounds now, but close to 200 pounds. You don't need to go as fast as you may suspect to do water sports. So slow it down. Uh, in that water sports section, we've got a, a speed gauge so you can say, Hey, this is the sport we're doing. This is how much they weigh. This is how fast we should go. Um, you can see these are all the modules that you get. If you want to check that training out, best boat captain on the water. And then the most important thing is learn the rules of the water, how to navigate, uh, what things mean at night, night boating, um, how, to how to run in rough water, and then the unwritten rules of boating. Things like uh, courtesy at the boat ramp, um, waving at other boaters, just being a friendly boater, what that all means, not going into somebody's cove and cranking your music up, that respectful thing. I did a video on etiquette that you can go check out, but we get into the actual rules of boating, the how to be a friendly boater and a courteous boater uh, in that training as well. But those are things that you have to, as a new boater, you've got to learn them so that you're safe and you're courteous and you're respectful to your other boaters. Uh, and you don't cause damage to somebody on your boat or um, cause harm to somebody on another boat. So it's a, it's a great training. You've got to learn these things, whether it's uh, my training. We go way more in depth of practical boating skills than just the boater safety training, which is awesome that almost every state's requiring now. I love it. Um, but this is about how to operate your boat so you have less frustration, less stress. Um, it's the best boat captain on the water training. You can check it out. Um, subscribe to the channel if you like this video and other boating videos. We've got over 200 that you can check out that are just education. YouTube's recommended one uh, for you as well. And you can check out that Best Boat Captain on the Water training at bestboatcaptainonthewater.com. Leave your comment of your best suggestion for first-time boat owners, newer boat owners, and let us uh, um, help out the community even more. Remember, life truly is better on a boat.